This is about plot. I've tried writing two stories so far, one each year. And the first time, it was conflict. Second attempt around, I did a little better. I found that I had some conflict. I had some motivations for the main character. I had bad guys for them to go after. And I got through the first part of the book really fast, and I really enjoyed it. I felt like I was on the right track. Everything seemed to be going forward. Then I hit the murky middle, and all of a sudden, I've stalled out again. I don't feel like I had enough for the characters to do. So I've been in the last month or two just kind of analyzing why. And I, yeah, let me just do a quick review of what I have found for plot, the recommendations out there. I mean, Swain with the scene sequence combination, I think would agree with the, you know, every end of every scene, you have to have a yes, but. Yes, he got out of the pit, but he is now facing a tiger. Or a no and. No, he did not get out of the pit, and the dying he thought he was holding turns out to be a snake. Uh, both of those escalate the situation. And you keep doing escalation until you get to the end of the thing, and then you say, yes, he beat up the bad guy, and he won the girl. Whatever. Uh that's one way of looking at plotting. The other way is more from like Sanderson. He tends to talk about romance plots or underdog sports story plots. And his suggestion is if you're getting stuck, go to a good movie, go to a book, look at what they did in that movie or book, try to understand the key beats of that movie or book, and then replicate that procedure with your own characters, your own setting, make it yours. Okay, I don't really like that idea, but I understand what he's saying. Now, I started looking into Dungeons and Dragons as a kind of simile for a novel. The only difference is the game master has no control over what the players at the table are going to do. So they could completely derail the story and take you off in a, any old direction. So how did a GM cope with that lack of structure? Um, how to be a great GM basically boiled it down for himself into a series of adventures where they're getting things, building things, testing things, and then using them to beat the bad guy. Um, the adventures were structured around that, and I, you know, he has a nice worksheet and things like that you can find on his website. He's on YouTube. Um, but lately, he started talking about a different system that is even more dynamic. You know, he structured it in such a high level that if the player characters decide to go over here, he can kind of move the story and the plot beads over to there. And, you know, if they do this and it causes a problem, they can, you, he can readily rewrite the story in his own head very quickly without having to spend hours and hours and hours plotting out every little detail of the adventure. He boiled it down to, he even got to the point now where he's saying, well, for each of these little adventures, there is a kind of plot collecting, you know, you're going out to get something, discovery, you're going out to figure out a problem or find something, uh, delivering things, you're going to have to get this to a certain person by a certain time, uh, and thwarting, you're going to stop these people from doing whatever they're doing. I mean, that's a pretty comprehensive grouping, but what I found interesting when I was looking at that is, to me, collecting is the same as getting. So on his old plot, he could have just as easily changed the getting adventures into collecting adventures. Uh, the building is very much like discovery. You're building your new widget. You're discovering how it works or how these pieces fit together. So again, it's there. All of this is confusing me because we have a lot of different ways of representing plot 
but maybe I'm dense, but none of those really tell me what plot really is. And only recently have I kind of boiled all of these different plot mechanisms down to one thing, which now that I look at it makes me feel really stupid. To me, a boiled down plot is a big problem, a big disaster, or a sequence of problems and disasters that drive all of the characters. Like in my last attempt at writing, one of the main reasons I stalled out in the middle is because my bad guys really didn't have any incentive to do anything. They didn't have to act. They didn't have to stop my main character. Or if they wanted to, they could do it easily because the main character was weak and unable to defend themselves. That's why my story hit a, hit a roadblock. It just died. I did not have a good enough problem. And it really annoys me that it's taken me years of looking at this and nobody has ever really said to me, oh, what a plot really is identifying is what are the problems and how to solve them. If somebody had said that to me years ago, I think I would have understood it better. Think about seat of the pants writers, people who sit down and just throw characters on a piece of paper and start going around and the characters are doing things. How in the world can they possibly control that? I have no idea until now. Uh, the only Stephen King story that I remember watching and being intrigued by was The Langoliers, which was a, like a TV movie. Uh, that came out a long, long time ago. But I look at that and I think about it and what did he do? He created a problem that really only had one good solution to get out of it. He then threw a bunch of people with very dynamic personalities, one of them insane, uh, one of them psychic, I believe, and a bunch of other different types that would then help them to figure out what was going wrong, and they could then come up with a solution that would get them back home. All of the conflict came from the people in that story. There were no external bad guys other than this big event of the world was going to be destroyed if they don't get themselves out of there. Basically, they were stuck in yesterday, and yesterday was being destroyed. They needed to get back to today. It's kind of an interesting concept. But, but put them in that situation. Make sure there's conflict, and start writing. They have to get out of there somehow, or there's no story. So... You've defined a gigantic problem that's going to affect all of the characters, that's going to change their behavior, that's going to bring them into conflict because people are going to be disagreeing on how to solve the problem and what they need to do. But it's, that's it. That's how seat of the pants writers could do it. Define a problem that's so big, that has very few outlets, and start writing. Where's the creativity in that? Well, at that point, you're, well, how can I get my characters to conflict with one another? What's a good way? A lot of what if questions come up, you know, ah, oh, it's getting boring. What if I had this character go insane and start murdering other people? What if they weren't able to murder them because things were starting to be dampened down and they couldn't do it? How would the bad guy then go about murdering people when he can't use a gun to do it? I mean, those are all the kind of what-if questions that he probably put through his head and realized, okay, yeah, guns no longer work because gunpowder doesn't react the same way it did when they were normal. But a knife would, so he used a knife. I mean, the... I could see now how he could write that story without plotting it out. That, to me, is a very, very important insight to me. Plotting is the same as problem. But there you go. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs>